Good morning and welcome. This is your Q&A call. So if you did come up with a question, something you want me to jump into right away, drop it down in that chat box. Let me know what it is that you would like me to start with. I do wanna show you one thing that we have done um, that was rolled out. If you were on the call last week, you probably saw it. Um, let me see if I can jump in and find. So when you use the adjustment reinvestment strategy, we now have a little box that you can check or uncheck in order to show whether it's going to show as even or not in that box. So this will change it where it's no longer zero straight across the board. You can check that box and it will still show the difference in the payment in that upper right hand corner. So any questions on that? And I know that that was one of those fixes that some LOs like it one way, other LOs like it another. So we made it so you could have it your way. Okay, looks like we're all good there. Any questions, anything that you would like me to start with? And you can raise your hand or you can jot it down in the chat box, either one. If you do know that you have audio, you can raise your hand and I can jump right into um, unmuting you so you will be able to talk. New to this, can I do borrower paid? comp and lender paid comp. Absolutely. So Raul, I'm just going to go into one of my older ones. Let's go into the MI purchase. So when I go into my presentation or the actual product and I set my product up, there's two places that you can show lender paid. You can show lender paid right here in the points. If you place it as a negative amount, it is point, it is getting a lender credit versus paying points. So let's say we're gonna give them one point lender credit. I'm gonna drop into my closing cost details. And in here, there is a fee called contribution. So if I add fee, I'm gonna click on here and type a C to make it go to the C section and then find compensation or contribution. Clicking on contribution, I can again add it as a dollar amount or a percentage. So if I add it as a percentage, let's say we're gonna do 1% one, 1 seller here as well. And if I wanna show both seller and um, lender in here, all I would do is add another contribution line. We're going to do the same thing we just did. 1%, but this time I would leave it as lender. So that is where you would be able to show that contribution, being able to come in and be given to the client. So let me go into my Q&A. How to edit the fee template. When I make changes and rename it, the changes aren't saved or it reflects back to the original. Okay, so here is how you, David, need to save it. And my guess is you probably have a bunch of them in your settings under your different names. So if you click on settings, fee templates are right here. You should have a basis of eight fee templates a few more if you have a few other products, but the basis one should be conventional FHA, USDA, and VA purchase and a refi. If you do jumbos, you might throw a jumbo in there. If you do down payment assistance, you might have an FHA and a conventional with that down payment assistance on it. But if you come in here and you have so many, and you have ones that, like I have two USDA purchases, I can delete it out. So I can remove anything that is a duplicate in here that I don't wanna have in here. So once I go in here 
to edit it, all I need to do is click on whichever one I edit. So let's say I am going to edit my fast track FHA fees. All I do is come in, highlight it. I'm going to say it went to 545. And then in order to save it, just click on another one. It automatically saves for you. So you can see that 545 is in there then. So that is how you can do that. Any questions, any other questions before I jump out of the fees that I can answer for anyone else? Some fees in here, um, we already went over contribution. Down payment assistance, we do have a fee in here. Let's add fee called down payment assistance. So if I type in that D, there should be one called just down payment assistance. Now mine has a bunch of them because I've shown people um, in the past that you can make your own fees as a custom fee. But if you use the down payment assistant fee that we have already in the system, it is calculated to properly be subtracted from your closing cost. If you add your own down payment assistance, let's say I put a home now in here, then I have to reflect it a little different. I have to use a negative here, and my PPE needs to be checked. Also, I don't change who pays it. I leave it on borrower paid. So as long as you're using the one that we have already in there, it's all set up for you. Everything is done in the background. But if you do use your own, make sure that you are using, again, a negative. It is marked PPE. And that's because it's handled in the escrow period. And you leave it on borrower paid. Do not change it to seller or lender because that's then showing a credit for them, um, showing them that they're actually getting money back. And we don't want to do that. So it looks like there's no other fees in here. I have another one from David. How do I add a column with an additional product to an existing TCA? So let's go into one of my existing TCAs. This one only has two products showing here. I'm gonna click on the last product that I have in that TCA. Once I click on that product, and I'm gonna just open this up, you wanna be in the monthly cost window. If I don't click on it, all I'm going to do is advance forward two times. At the bottom of this page is the add another product. Simply clicking on that add another product. Now for those that are new, there's a few different ways you can add this product. The fastest way to do it is if you have another product that is similar, is to copy that product. So I can copy from that FHA or the conventional 30% or 30 year. So let's say I copy that 30 year. So now I have two identical products. All I would do at this point is to come in here. Maybe I have a 3% product that my client wants to see. So I would go in and throw that 3% in here. And I'm going to put 30-year 3% down. If I can find that 3. Anything else that would change in the loan, I would come in and change. I'm going to say the interest rate would probably go up a little bit. And if I'm showing MI, which is on that third page, my MI factor would increase as well. So then I have my third product built and I've only changed a couple of things within that product. So where can I find templates Mortgage Coach has already made? Okay, so here is the template conversation. If you are an enterprise, your enterprise may or may not have chosen to build in templates for you. If they did build in templates for you, you would find them, and I'm gonna go back one page, this is the second page of my product, in the closing cost details, you might find some templates in there, and the way to tell the difference in the templates, if it is an enterprise template, it has an E in front of it. 
Now, if you do have branch templates and we can build a branch template out for any enterprise only, you would have a B in front of it. If you need branch templates, you can email me, tina at mortgagecoach.com. I will send back a um, worksheet, an Excel worksheet for you to fill in your fees because we don't know what your fees are. And then it takes my team a week to a week and a half, depending on how many they have, um, to get those templates in. So it is fairly quick. Any template that does not have the E or the B, that is your personal template. The second spot that you're going to find templates is add products from template here, and it's the same. You can have an E, you can have a B, or you can have neither. The E's are at the enterprise level, B's are at the branch level, and then the other ones are yours. It is super, super simple to build out templates. So if you do need a video on how to build out templates, send it over to me. Um, just a request and I will send you that video. And you can't post it in here. Please send me the templates videos because I will not remember. So please send me an email, tina at mortgagecoach.com. You cannot go back and reorder these. So David, if you wanted to add a new product to the first column of the existing TCA, and let's say you do not want this FHA as the first product, here is what I would do. I would go into my monthly cost, I would add on one more product. This would end up being my FHA. Copying it from my FHA and clicking on OK. So I have just relocated that FHA loan. Now I'm going to go back to that first one and I would place anything over it that I don't want. So let's say I really wanted my 30 year here. Um, my 5% down. Again, I'm gonna copy that. So I'm gonna copy my first conventional 30, that's my 5% down. Now here's where it comes into play. If I don't have a fourth product that I wanna place in here, I'm going to click on my little folder up here and I'm gonna come down to where it says presentation. In that presentation window, I now, can turn off that conventional 30 year. So it's only gonna show the three products in my presentation. So you really can't just go in there and add it. You have to go in and manipulate to move things around. So that is the easiest way that you can do it. Now I am gonna jump back in to one more set of templates. Strategy templates. If you have an account that is built after November 2018, you will see a set of strategy templates in there. And I'm actually going to go in and in my strategy account because I have all the new ones in there. Whoops, tapped an extra button. So your strategy templates will have these basic strategy templates in here. And they're set in there for you in order to get you started on using strategy templates. This is the fastest way to build out a presentation. But the problem with the strategy templates is initially they do not have your closing costs in there. So the fastest way to come in and place those closing costs in there is you click on whichever one you wanna update you click on the edit button and then simply clicking on it, the product name. And if you have products that you build out, those product templates, that's all you need to lay in. So I would come in and I would lay in my FHA product template. The next one that I would do is I would click here again and I would go down to the conventional 3% and I would lay in a product template based on my conventional 3% if I have it. If I don't have that product template, I can lay another product template and then just manipulate it. But your product template should have all the same standard fees. David, do you not have the strategy templates in there? OK, 
because we have just the basics, FHA, MI options. Um, I don't think arm loan, I don't think is in there. Fixed versus five, seven, 10. So there's some basic ones in here, the 30, 20, 15, and the cow, the cost of waiting. So while you check, I'm gonna go on to that next question, but let me know if you don't, email me and I can have them pushed in there for you. So let's go to Geraldo. When recording video or audio, can we also record our screen to highlight and point with the cursor as we explain the TCA to our client? The easy answer is no. Um, the reason why we, are, we do not have it that way is sheer the amount of space we would need to have for the memory to be able to save all of these because we save everything you do in case you're audited. Even if, let's say, you leave one company and you go to another company, we never delete that account in case you are audited. So for that reason, we cannot go in and record the screen. Now, what some people do is, for example, let's go on here and I'm just gonna turn on my camera. So I would have my camera turned on and that's a beautiful background of Anthorp where I went and visited. And then I would place this on here and I would record my screen with me up there, with me doing the highlighting and moving. So once I opened it up, then I could record it. Um, Bomb Bomb is great to do it on, Zoom, um, any of the meeting ones where you can put your video or your face up there, along with having your screen shown in the background, you can do those recordings. The difference is it takes out the insight so you can no longer see when your client looks at the presentation. So there's advantages, there's disadvantages. My other point that I like making here is I am all about marketing and I understand um, in depth the concepts of marketing. I have a degree um, in marketing and in marketing, it takes a client five to seven times to see your name, hear your name, associate you with the borrower or with the product before they buy in. So I like saying that this is your point to set up the next assumed meeting. And that next assumed meeting is based on the fact that you're gonna go over the presentation together with the client because there's lots of numbers in there and they probably are going to have questions and you're the only one that can answer it. So that's the long answer, but the short answer is simply no. Okay, so we do not have, David, what company are you with? Secure mortgage. I am not sure that you guys have an enterprise account. And the only time that we step in and help with templates is the enterprise accounts, um, simply because we don't know everyone's closing cost fees. We have no idea what your fees are. So what I would suggest to you is to go in and check um, with someone in your office, office manager, or whoever it is that could pull those numbers for you so you can put them in or i can send you the worksheet that you can give to someone in the office or someone at corporate where they can fill in that sheet for you so you can put it down your in your um, mortgage coach templates so but we um unless you're under another dba um i don't think that you are an enterprise client and the only reason why we can't do it is because you're not set up in branches in the background so we only do them to the branches. We don't go into individual accounts unless we're doing support for them. Um, Stephanie, let's go into how to use a strategy template. And I'm actually gonna turn this off because it distracts me, I'm ADHD. There we go. So David, if you want the video on how to, um, 
how to build them out, send me an email, Tina at Mortgage Coach, and I'll show you how to build them out really easy. Um, it doesn't take a long time. It's just that initial first one that takes a little bit more effort. And then after that, they're really easy because you copy. So strategy templates, when you use a strategy template. So if I click to use a strategy template, and let's see, which one do I want to use? Let's just use that FHA because that's an easy one. Instead of editing the template, which will keep those permanent changes, I'm going to copy to a new client. This is actually going to build a whole separate total cost analysis. So I am not working in that strategy template anymore. I have started a total cost analysis. Switching it over to individual and giving it a name. So this will be my Stephanie one. I would put in your name. I would put in your phone number, and this is the minimum fields that I would fill in based on me wanting to kick out a TCA really fast. I would build in what it is. So this is an initial purchase. Contact information. I like your new home. You can place this in the strategy template so it always says your new home and you don't have to type it in. Your goal is already in there, affordability or assumptions. The only thing I need to fill in is the current property value. So this is how much is Stephanie approved for? 250,000. Affordability, nothing is required. So you could skip over that if you don't need to know the DTI or anything. And I'm gonna go right to my FHA. In my FHA, I know the only thing missing in my FHA is my interest rate. So that's all I need to place in there. I'm gonna click through it just so you can see everything else is in there because I loaded up my FHA template. Even my MI with my no MI cutoff, everything's in there. Then I'm gonna to go to the down payment or the 3% down and do the same thing. I'm just gonna add whatever my interest rate would be. Now I do have an MI factor in here. So if I need to change the MI factor, it's super easy. I just come back here. Oh, I don't have an MI factor. So if I did, I could come back and check it. If not, I would place it in. My MI cutoff is 78%. If you know what your minimum months are, you can place in that minimum month payment as well. And then once you have everything in there, you have a complete presentation. Set up that analysis based on your clients. And then you can go right into that preview. Now, protect yourself. Place in a quote date. I am seeing more and more loan officers skip this step. This protects you. So make sure that you are protecting yourself. And then I say click on generate link. The reason why is you should be placing videos on your total cost analysis. And the reason why is because marketing wise, it's just better for you. Clients tend to be, and this is based on the federal government and Todd Duncan, clients tend to be 5% happier when you've interacted with them with a video. And people who have videos get more five-star reviews. So it does make them a little bit better. I'm going to click on add audio video. If I have it on my phone, I can click in mobile app. It brings up a selfie mode or in web browser, which will bring up my audio right here. Once I have that on there, it's a simple click to record the message, click to stop the message. I can either click here to upload, or if I simply X off the video, it's gonna ask me to upload it and tell me when it is done. So pretty easy once you have there in there. So the product templates, David, are the same. We don't build out product templates on the Mortgage Coach side. The only ones we build out are just the strategy templates. Everything else is if you upgrade to that enterprise client and we can build them in the branch level because that has to be the branch level. So can I record a video from my phone and upload it rather than doing it on the spot? Absolutely. So if I wanted to record it on my video or on my phone, all you have to do is log into your mortgage coach. And I'm actually going to go to a site that shows it. Um, I don't have my phone on me that I normally use. 
Actually, I'm going to show you resources, download guides, and in here is how to add video via mobile. I'm going to put that in the chat box for you. Once I click on it, it does take me through there. Remember, this is the login button. Um, we kind of have it hid for a reason. We don't want people picking up your phone and going into your mortgage coach account. So most people start clicking in here and they're like, um, I don't know why it won't take me to my clients. It won't take you to your clients because you have to log in in that upper left hand corner. Once you log in, you will go into a client, click on total cost analysis, and in there is video. So either you can start from scratch or you can record over another video. It will ask you questions on what you want to do. Super easy on your phone. Um, and I suggest, you know what, unless you have a great computer with a really good camera, use your phone. Um, because your phone, the audio and video is typically better. It's, they've come so far compared to the computer. They haven't really focused as much on the computers. Um, just going through and making sure. How do you send a TCA with an Android phone? So when you go into your phone, and I think I can show it here. Nope, it won't show on this one. I'll just go into that presentation. Um, I think it's in this one. If it is, I'll give you the link to this one. So when you create your TCA on your phone, there is a send button up here. It is that less than symbol with the three dots. So when you click on that, that is where it's going to allow you to text it or email it, put it in Facebook, whatever it is you want to do with it. It's up here. Now, iPhone and Androids have different capabilities. So the Android is very limited on where you can push that TCA to. The, no, the iPhone is very limited on where you can push the TCA to. You can text or email. The Android is not. Pretty much any different program, um, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Instagram, all of them, you can push that TCA over to them if your company allows via their compliance. So if you are unsure, don't get yourself in trouble, but if you are sure that it's not an issue, um, be using your social media, push these out. Right now is a great one to show refinance scenarios. Now is a great time to refinance and roll in your loose debt. Um, do those little catchy things in order for you to be able to go in and show. But again, right here, and you can see this one, is the iPhone, email, SIMS, or cancel. So this SMS is your texting. So I will copy this for you. So you can have that just in case you need. I did remember to push play today, so yay, Tina, that's a win. Normally I don't remember those. Reinvestment question. How to add a product saving back into the payment for a faster payoff once adding the MO savings back into the payment? Is there still a place in the presentation that shows what the monthly savings was? Absolutely. So let's go into one of these. And I'm just going to go back into, oh, I'm in a different account. So I'm going to go into this one. This one is a 5% down. A cost of waiting we, let's not do that one so that's not going to be very efficient we'll go into Stephanie so Stephanie's doing a 30-year FHA or a 3% the refinance or reinvestment section is located in your analysis window there is an adjust reinvestment strategy so the first thing you want to do is you want to know how much is the MI that they're paying monthly so I'm quickly just going to go to my conventional 3%, $109. So I'm going to use $100 as an estimate. Now I'm going to go back down to that analysis window. 
And the cool thing about it is it will tell me when it's supposed to drop off if I put it in there. And I don't remember, I didn't put it in there, but it will tell me the MI drop off if I put in a certain month. So let's go back and add, we're gonna do five years. So, and if you know, based on the area that you're in, that the client's MI, based on the property appreciation, you could refinance it in four years or whatever it is, place that in here so you can talk about that refinance option. So we're going back over here again. And now, MI cutoff right here. There's where my MI cutoff is. So in order for me to show starting to make payments, and I'm gonna say that's about 10 months, I'm gonna click on the little pencil here. And I'm gonna start it at 10 months, adding that $100. Once I click the save button and X, you can see that now my freedom point or my term has been reduced by four years. You can get super creative in here. So I'm already saving $39 a month by choosing this conventional 3%. So if I wanna show even payments, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna add a line. I'm gonna add that in month one, paying 39, 32. We're gonna add that. Whoops, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna save it. Now it's going to show making that extra $39. But remember that $39 is also now added here. So this becomes 139. Now I'm showing making even payments and paying or reinvesting that MI option once it drops off. So I'm able to really dive in and show my clients that impact based on having the same payment. Now, when I go to my actual total cost analysis, okay, so that's a great question. So once you put a payment in, the assumption is it's going to make that payment for the life of the loan. So let's go back over here, let's do this one. And let's say I put, they wanna put a $5,000 P&I or, print, or print, principal payment with the first payment. If I just put 5,000 and I click save, it's gonna assume that every single payment that client makes is adding that $5,000. So in order for me to turn it off, I simply add a zero line in and save it and now it's only making that one $5,000 payment. So by putting that 39 in here and not closing it off afterwards, that assumption is that $39 is going to be made until we make a change, which in month 10, and actually it should be month 120, then we start making that extra 139 payment. So does that make sense? I'm gonna come in here and delete this out. Yep. So make sure that if you are doing it, you turn it off. If you only wanna make a single payment, you can just drop it in this window. So you can quickly. Now, once I show even, it does show even here at the top. So it doesn't show that savings anymore and that's how you know that you have the savings the exact amount. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna open up a presentation. I'm gonna do it the, the faster way. So now that I've, and let's turn that off. So now that I've gone in here, I have your payments are equal because I haven't checked that little box. So I'm right now showing that the payment, they're making an equal payment. I can also show in the more information that reduction payment. If they click on custom, they can see how it's set up. But let's say I still wanna show that extra $39 savings here. That's where that new button comes in, that I come in here and I click here. 
In order for it to change on the presentation, I have to click next. And now what it'll show is that they are not equal anymore. There's a $39. So once I go in there again, this will be gone. Um, but just because I'm in a dev and I'm changing things quickly, it's on there. So any questions on that reinvestment strategy or any more, more questions, more in-depth questions that you would like me to answer on it? Because you can really dive into that reinvestment strategy and do so much. Thanks, Karen. Now remember, on the reinvestment strategy, a couple of the things that you can do, if you have someone who has 10% down, you know they're gonna pay MI anyways, maybe the better choice is showing them a 5% down, placing that investment, whoops. I hate when I do that. Placing that investment balance down here, that extra 10% that you're telling them, or the extra 5% that you're telling them, you know what? What if we invest 5%, put 5% down on the home, and then we pay the upfront MI so you don't have monthly MI if they plan on saving the house or staying in there? You can get really creative. So if I wanted to start, let's say that there would be $10,000, I could put that $10,000 here. I could put a rate of return. And I could even put, if there was extra payments, because this one's less of, or this one's less, I would put the extra payments here starting 6% without the starting. So let's say it would save them 220 a month. I could then show them based on the, the facts, which one's going to be better at the end of that time frame if they're trying to save up to go into a bigger home. So really diving into this in order to understand your client's financial goals. If you know they have a financial goal of buying an investment property six years after they have purchased their current property, you can come in and show them how to build it up so they have enough money down in six years to then not have to pull money out of their first. So really dive into their, their information, get to know your client, get to know their financial status, because this is going to help you be able to prepare them better for the future. Any questions on anything else I can show you? So open floor, any other questions that I can show you? Anything you're unsure of? Everyone's quiet now. You guys are all digesting everything I've told you. So remember, everything that you can do in here, you can also do in your partner area. So you can be just as creative in your partner area. So I'm reading a question, one moment. No big deal on the typos. Okay, so new to the business, did the first TCA using Zoom and sent himself a link. Showed the video but did not show the MC highlighting and did not show additional screens I went to, like the more information. Okay, so if I was doing it on here, I actually use, um, the recording on here does not record my video at the same time, I don't believe. I use Comcast to record my screen and I pick the section of the screen I wanna record, but it should be picking up your highlighting and stuff. So 
my guess if it just showed your video that maybe you did not share your screen on the actual zoom meeting so if you go up to your um menu for zoom there is a section that says share there's a little folder with an arrow pointing up that says share and i don't think that it will show if i share my full screen let me try changing my share to my full screen to see if you guys can see it so up here do you guys see my menu bar where my mouse is okay so this share button when you click on that share button you choose the window i always suggest only sharing your actual window that you're in because you don't want them to see everything else on your computer so share just this window and click the share button. But I believe on Zoom, it does not record an alcohol. And we can go back and look in this video to see if it does, because I did um, open my video and put it up here. But I believe if you're sharing just the individual window, it will not um, record your actual video. So, so come, let me, I'm gonna find that program. It's one you have to pay for, but I can do editing and everything in it. So give me a moment, I'm gonna find. That program, hopefully I can find it quickly. My computer did some silly stuff and I can't see any of my applications. And I'll actually share you got show you guys it. It's a great program. I don't use it all the time. And it might have up oh, there it is. Camtasia. So Comcast is what I use for casting it. So give me a moment, it is starting up. I'm gonna share my whole screen with you. So it looks like we need to upgrade ours. So Camtasia is what I use. And what's really great about this is when I went in and I do my new product, or new recording if I know that I already, already want to set it up for the recording, I can import any of my media files that I want to import. So let's say, or if I want to record, I can click record and I can record any of the window that I choose. So if I make this little square, is it gonna let me grab it? It might not. If I make my little square smaller, um, it will make it smaller. And all I do is start recording to start that recording. And then I can do any highlighting, moving any screens, whatever I want. But again, once I'm done with the recording, then I actually can go in and edit it in here. It didn't take me a long time to learn it, but it really is a solid program. Um, for you to go in and it does cost, I don't know how much it costs because I don't pay for it. So I would suggest going in and using it, but it is a really good one. Oops, and it's not gonna let me stop recording. There we go. So will you be sending out a recording of this? If you want a recording of this, um, please send me a message, Tina at mortgagecoach.com. Once I have it prepared and all in there for you, then I will send that recording out. But you can see down here, all it is is left click clicking. I can split it. Again, left click to split. And then I can even delete this section. If I ripple delete, 
that makes it so the section you can't see where I deleted it. But if I leave it and I just push delete, um, it won't blend in as well. So always use that ripple. Um, that's something that they taught me. I can also split it. So if I split it, I can separate the video and the audio. And then I can change things down here on just the video or just the audio for the program. So again, it's a really easy program for me to get into. I can add stuff in here if I need to add or highlight cursors, do all kinds of things up here. Um, but like anything else, it takes some time to, to learn it, um, another program, but it's definitely been one that I have developed my skills in and I actually really like it. So let's go. Um, I use an Android and Comcast just is easier. It doesn't lock up as much. On my computer, I actually use another program for casting. And that program is called Reflection. So for casting, I use Reflector 3. And Reflector 3, um, if you have an eye product, has been the one that we found the most stable. So that's why we use Reflector 3. On, the, on my Android, I use Comcast because again, we found that it's a little bit more stable. I tried using Reflector 3, but when they updated it, it actually messed up and I couldn't get it to work again on my phone. But both, I think both of them are free programs too on those. So if you are, are doing it, and it's great if, you're, if you have a TV in your office, um, for you to be able to reflect it onto your TV really quick if you have clients in the office. The professionalism goes up so high because they're now seeing it on the TV that's on the wall versus, you know, on your computer. Of course, you can always use wires, but if that, especially the um, Apple TVs, they're amazing now. So there's so much you can do on there. Any other questions or anything else I can answer for you guys? Yes, Snagit is also another one that's great. So um, I don't know about, so Zoom, we use Zoom when we are definitely doing meetings and stuff. Um, Snagit, we use if we are creating presentations. So let's say I'm going to create a presentation to go show to an office and I wanna show them actually me doing it on my computer. I will use Snagit so I can quickly just do it and it doesn't take me time to set it up and everything. And then I will place it in that because it'll save it over for me and everything. It's just a, easier for me to do it that way. But if I am doing something that I need to edit, that's when I will use Camtasia is when I have something that I'm editing. So Snagit I'll use if I'm not editing and it's a short clip that I wanna save why Camtasia I use if it's a project. Does that make sense? And reflection is for casting. So when I am casting it um, in the office or if I'm using my phone and casting my phone onto my computer, that's when I use reflection or I use Comcast. Casting. Casting is when I have my screen here and I want to show it on my TV. I don't have to hook it up with wires. I can just come in here, click on my Reflector 3, find the same. I have Roku on my home TV, find my Roku, and I can cast it from my computer so I can have it play on my TV without using wires. It's a good thing I'm techie. 
any other questions or anything else I can answer for you guys? And ladies. Funny thing is I, I, um, I have children and my kids are all, um, youngest is 16, oldest is 26 and I'm almost 50. And so when people hear me talk, they assume I'm a millennial. And when they see me and then I'm like, no, 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 I was actually raised when the computers first started coming out. Um, just fell into loving computers and technology and I made them my friend. And I think that has made it easier for me to learn technology. Make technology your friend. Don't struggle over it. If there's questions you have, reach out to someone who knows it um, and just don't mind block it. Don't make it your head think technology is difficult because it really isn't. Every single piece of technology that you work with, there's a pattern and a process that you go through. So as long as you learn that process or the pattern that's necessary, you'll be able to multiply that and be able to do it over and over again. It's that initial learning the pattern that is the only thing. And if you break it down into it's just patterns that I'm learning in the process, then I think mindset wise, it does change the ability for people who have that mind block thinking technology is different or technology is difficult. Okay, looks like there is no more questions. Thank all of you guys for coming. Again, if you do want a copy of the video, email me, tina at mortgagecoach.com. Does take me a little while to um, get it over into YouTube because I have to change it up. But otherwise, thank you guys. Have a great day and a great weekend. And if you have any questions, remember support is always there for you. Little chat box down here at the bottom. There. Their response time is typically under a minute, which is fabulous. Thanks again and have a great weekend. Bye.